Hello, how's it going? Welcome to Whiskey Wins with me, Stuart. Today, I've got something huge to show you. Hello, yes, as you could have told from the thumbnail and description, we have Daft Mill 2009 UK uh, release, cash number 29, and it's First fill, all are also sherry. Uh, still in 2009, bottled in 2020, making it roughly 10 to 11 year old. Uh, this is bottle 142 of 269, and it's bottled at a hefty, huge 61.1% ABV. So this is different from any other daft mill I've had, because every daft mill that I've tried have always been bourbon. So, we'll get down to it and see if, I mean, I've already done a video on opening this, but we'll get down to it and see if this is any good or not. So, I paid £165 for this, and I got this from uh, Luvian's, I'm pretty sure. And I have mentioned before, I did get my brother uh, to go into the ballot with me. Um, so, I entered and he entered and he got it, and I managed to get a bottle. Uh, I don't do this often. It's pro I've probably done it once or twice. Uh, I'm not a big fan of when people do it all the time and get everybody in their family and then they end up flipping the bottle. But I thought I could excuse myself because I knew I was going to open it. And as you can see, I've opened it and I've enjoyed quite a bit. And I've also sent some samples out. So anyway, we'll get down to the, uh, the nose, the palate and the finish. It's very powerful on the nose. Uh, yeah, you can tell. It packs a punch, you can tell it packs a lot of flavour, there's a lot going on. It's not necessarily nippy on the nose, the 61.1%. I wouldn't really be able to tell that it is that high ABV, except from, the com not the complexity, but maybe the, the depth of it, the, just how powerful it is, gives it away a little, uh, if that makes sense. So I'm not saying that it's spicy on the nose, it's not burning the nose hairs or anything, but you can tell that there's something huge with it. Once you get past the powerful big hit of flavours, which I will describe, you get this soft, delicate, almost perfumey, floral, aromatic scent, and that is characteristic for me of Daft Mill and some Lowland whiskies. But yeah, there's definitely Daft Mill character behind all that sherry, behind all that powerfulness. So there's creamy porridge with blackcurrant jam mixed in. I, I like doing this with my porridge. Instead of putting honey or sugar in it or salt that some weird Scottish people do, I like to put jam or peanut butter in my uh, porridge. So I've put blackcurrant jam, raspberry jam, strawberry jam in my porridge before and mixed it up. This is exactly what this is like. It's creamy, it's oaty, uh, barley and the blackcurrant jam, and it just reminds me of blackcurrant jam and porridge. It is spicy, but not ABV, like I said. It's a sherry spice with kind of prunes, dates, malted loaf. There's a, a honeycomb flavour, sort of like a crunchy, the, the, the Cadbury confectionery dairy milk or whatever it is. Uh, I think it's Cadbury that do it. Um, a crunchy bar, so honeycomb or cinder toffee, I think it's called. There's definitely that there, it's nice and, how would you describe that scent? <laughs> it is honeycomb, it's, it's almost warm, it's kind of toffee-ish, sweet, sugary. Oh, it's, it's really nice on the nose, I wish I could just, um, I wish there was a sniff function. <laughs> like a scratch and sniff. There is some chocolate coming through and this is on the back of that honeycomb kind of reminiscent of, uh, like I said, the crunchy. Some orange oil. And yeah, that, that's just about as much as I can pick out at the moment with the nose. I've got the water here. I'm not going to add water just yet because I think the nose doesn't require water. I think this is perfect without any water on the nose. I could be wrong and maybe I should experiment and I probably will experiment. Um, but for the sake of the video, I kind of like doing them raw. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like doing them bare back. I like having it just the whiskey. But I feel like I might need to add some water on the palate with this one. So the uh, the palate itself. Hmm. 
It is powerful. There's a lot of whiskey here. It's almost fizzy. Um, not like sh kind of like share, but feeling, but not really the taste. It's uh, it's like it's evaporating on my tongue, um, which it probably is doing. That's that's what happens anyway. Science. Um, but it feels like it's bubbling. It feels like it's fizzy. It's there's some ground coffee which makes it a touch earthy. Uh, it's not overly potent. The ground coffee, but it's definitely there. It's not like a strength blow your head off coffee it's just kind of quite subtle coffee there's some dark oily chocolate coming through there's aniseed uh, for sure there's there's some fruits uh, darker fruits darker berries all tied up together sort of like a maybe a, a dark chocolate uh, fruit and nut there's a, there's a little bit nutty there's some nuts there the cloves um, yeah let's say a dark chocolate fruit and nut lovely ties well together well balanced I think the sherry is a little bit dominant uh, over the actual character of the daft mill. You're not getting a lot of those soft, low ester flavours, as I always say, because he, he said that to me at the distillery. So I'm just going to use it, go in the back of it. But you're not getting those kind of really florally, fruity, um, soft fruit flavours on the palate, as you'd expect with daft mill, because it's a lot more yeah, sherry dominated. The, the Oloroso is impactful, it's powerful. More jam for sure uh, on on the palate. Not specifically any black currant jam, raspberry jam, strawberry jam. Just kind of jammy. Uh, we'll add some water, uh, a couple drops, or a couple. Uh, yeah, I don't know, just some water. So I've added some water. This is the first time I've actually added water to this whiskey. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, the nose is much the same with the. The water, but I'm gonna get down to the palate and see how that changes the um, the whiskey. Mm. So the water's bringing out a slight ginger spice. It softened those clove flavors, um, but it's also enhanced the the aniseed flavor almost to a point of like sweet licorice, um, or sweet bitter licorice. I'm not a fan of licorice, but the water's kind of bringing that out a little bit more. Um, and black currants back again. There's there's a more black currant flavour there. The finish, the finish is long for sure. Um, it's long for sure. It's such a long, uh, lengthy finish. It's very, um, very dramatic or very volatile finish. It's it's strong on the tongue. It's strong on the cheeks. It's quite. Um, I wouldn't say acidic, but it's quite. Almost to a, not burny either. I'm trying to think of a word, but it's quite raw <laughs> on the finish. Uh, it's quite sherry dominant on the finish, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, the sherry's slightly taken over the the daft mill, but it's still nice. There's nothing wrong with sherry. You've got those raisins, those dates, figs, uh, Christmas cake, all spice clove. That kind of flavour is definitely coming through. But you're also getting uh, a little bit of a creaminess and Something that I didn't experience on the palate is, is stewed apples. I'm getting a, a nice stewed apple taste on the finish. Also, I would probably say more orange, um, orange oil, and I think that's quite, uh, quite. Yeah, that's quite consistent with a, a sherry whiskey. Uh, you sometimes get these oil, orange oil flavors. So yeah, definitely getting an orange oil. This is a fantastic whiskey, there's no denying it. Uh, when I first opened this, I will link the video, it, it, it blew my mind and it's still a lovely whiskey. 61.1% ABV, can't really tell it on the nose. You can sort of tell it on the palate and the finish. The sherry, a little bit dominant over the daft mill um, qualities, the daft mill characteristics. However, it still ties well together and it's well rounded in my uh, opinion. I don't think the, the sherry's attacking it too much, but it's still a little bit dominant. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. £165, would I buy it again if I could get it at that price? It's expensive, it sure is. It's a single cask, though no added colouring, no chill filtering, and no daft mill distillery is not necessarily in it for the well everything's in it for, everyone's in it for money everyone wants to make money but at the same time i know that the, the Mill distillery are creating whiskey 
that they want to drink as well, that they want to put out for drinkers. So £165, I'm actually happy to pay that, and I would pay it again for another bottle of this quality. Um, possibly a little bit cheaper would be lovely, maybe 125 or something like that in line with the other ones, but because it's single cask, you can understand a little bit of increase. Um, would I recommend it? Yes, <laughs> definitely. Uh, you need to try this. Uh, if you haven't tried any Daft Mill before, uh, this might not be the one to try first. I definitely recommend some others, but I would say if you've tried some Daft Mill, if you like Daft Mill, if you like Sherry, you're going to like this. I think regardless if you even hate Daft Mill, you'd still like it because of the Sherry quantity, Sherry um, flavour to it. It's definitely a whiskey win. I'd buy it again at £165. I'd definitely recommend it. And is it worth it? Yeah, I, I think it is. Uh, personally, I do think it's worth it. So, yeah, thanks. Cheers, Francis. Cheers, everybody at Daft Mill. Um, cheers, Luvians, for, for selling the bottle and picking my brother over me, my brother who doesn't drink whiskey. But hey-ho. <laughs> um, yeah, cheers for, for letting me try this, letting me have this. Uh, money out of my own pocket anyway, but <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Just cheers, I'm going to enjoy this. This is muddling my words. Uh, I've been Stuart, this has been Whiskey Webbins. I'll see you later.